Chapter 15 The Very Last Tashi Weatherwise, Sunday would have been a much better day for the hills, but the ever-aspiring pack leader dithered over icy roads and the physical capacity of at least one member of our proposed party. OK, so I'm having an off day. Happens to us all. And it's no like you're cruising up either, mountain boy. And what's the point in a day like this, eh? Duncrine is known locally as the Dumpling, and it's easy to see why. In shape, it does resemble that dubious Scottish delicacy, the Clutey Dumpling, a big favourite of my Granny Meldrum. Apparently, it was one of Tom Weir's favourite walks. The wee hill only rises to a spectacular 462 feet, but is much renowned for the magnificent views it offers of Loch Lomond and the surrounding mountains. Not today, even conic hills obscured from view by the mists. Oh, by the way, I know you'd a sneaky walk up here back in May, big yin. and I bet that was a lovely night too. Shame about today's weather. I'm seeing nothing. And what about yon Drumoyne hill, eh? That's another one you just happen to forget about. But never one mistake when you were logging your own glorious conquests, eh? Is it any wonder I took charge of your life and help you to see the other side of the hill again? Remember, it's all samsara. It's just being here that matters, Lama Sonam. And don't you forget that when I'm no here. I'm not a Lama Tashi La. Maybe I was in a different life. But you've taught me none of that really matters. It's all samsara. And the only tools we need are an open heart and loving compassion. And through them we'll find our path to the eternal light of the Buddhas. The wee man was slow and slightly reluctant on the way up, and he even took a bit of gentle coaxing. Maybe this little dog's tail is drawing towards that bitter day I've always feared. Whatever happened to yon Anna? She's no joined us for a hell in a long time. I liked her too. She had kids, Tashy, and they tend to take over your life until they find one of their own and desert you. Lucky thing you've got a dog then, like me, eh? You'll always be my boy. And I'm not a bad dog, father. We make a good team. Aye, we do that, mountain boy. Tashi was like a wee express train on the way back down, to the comfort of the Kia's back seat, and a well-deserved wee nap. And why not? A dog my age needs his kit, and this back seat is right comfy. Bit on the narrow side, mind, so go easy on the brakes, biggin. What are you going to do without me running the show for ye? Eh? Two days after our trip to Duncrine, Tashi took a massive cluster seizure, and then spent a weekend in hospital. The end was near but a new wonder drug would delay it a little longer and give us time to say goodbye. You greeted that last morning like any other day, rolling on your back, making sounds of pleasure. As I rubbed your tummy for the last time, I wanted to let the bitter cup pass away from me. Take me sooner, let him have my life. I pleaded to a god long dead. You ate best steak mince. We briefly played with Tashi Ball, and I sang you Matry. By now, darling boy, you were living just for me. I could not let you do that any longer. So I steeled myself with a love that expects nothing in return. My dear friends helped us take that last walk together. I sang Matry throughout, and held you as your noble heart beat its last. Then I bowed before you, kissed your head, and left 
while you were still warm with the life we had lived. I have a collar for each of the four seasons of Tashi's life. He wore the first two in his spring and summer years, and then he had won for the last days of summer and our glorious autumn together, climbing his Tashi's. His winter collar was less worn than it should have been. Epilepsy stole at least two good years from him, and that makes me angry at the injustice of it. The first five years of our shared mountain adventure, his spring and summer, were the best of times, and indeed the most carefree. After Tashi was diagnosed with epilepsy, everything changed. I always knew that one day, a love as great as the one we shared would bring only pain and suffering. But a dog parent has to outlive their child. It is the right way of things. Dogs remain our children right up to their very last breath. They never grow up and leave the den for a pad of their own.